Science Maximites. My name is Phil and welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. Today we're gonna be looking at air pressure and friction and simple machines like levers, pulleys, and gears. We're gonna look at some rotational energy, um, some spring tension, and gravity. We need all those things because we're building Rube Goldberg machines! Rube Goldberg machines! Rube Goldberg machines! Rube Goldberg machines! Machines. Rube Goldberg, you heard me say Rube Goldberg machine. Okay, we got that part, okay, good. Rube Goldberg was a cartoonist who came up with the idea of having a simple task done by a machine that was extremely complicated. There are Rube Goldberg competitions all over the world and there's only a few rules. First, a human can only touch it once by starting the whole thing off and then the machine has to work all on its own. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, what's the science behind a Rube Goldberg machine? Well, it's all about changing energy. Remember, you start the whole thing off with just a little push. But if you want the machine to keep going and going and going, you have to come up with clever ways to add more energy to the system so you've got more energy to keep the machine going. So check this out. A bunch of stacked dominoes, which will start a chain reaction that leads to this mouse trap, which has all of its energy stored in the spring tension, which will release the ball. Boing! Check this one out. It's a bunch of pulleys, and there's a rope that goes up and down and up, attached to this lever where there's a ball, and there's a big heavy weight here. And when the weight gets knocked off the table, the ball falls into the hole and then goes down the tube, and so on. Check this one out. Here's a great way to change the direction of something. Say the ball falls on this lever. Well, it's weighted on this end, but then the weight falls off, and the ball goes this way. <laughs> and... I have changed myself into a cyborg to give myself super strength. No longer will I suffer the weakness of human muscles. Behold my awesome strength. Tremble in fear at my might. I will... Hmm. I may have to give myself some upgrades. Uh, yeah, so... Okay, maybe I'll just give myself super strength the old fashioned way, using the power of science. Today is all about mechanical advantage, like this fulcrum and this lever, transferring a lot of force over a short distance or a little bit of force over a long distance and vice versa. We are going to be building a trebuchet. A trebuchet. So a trebuchet looks a lot like a catapult, but a catapult uses elastic force to throw something, and a trebuchet uses the good old lever. There's a lot of weight on the short end of the lever, and on the other side of the pivot is the long end, and we've got a sling here with a marble in it, and we put that down here on the ground, and then we let it go, and whoosh, whoosh, it throws the marble. To build your trebuchet, here's what you need. Something to be your lever, like a pencil. Something to be your weight, I used batteries. You'll need to make a frame, and I use craft sticks and cardboard for that. A way for it to pivot, like a straw and a shish kebab skewer. Then you'll want a sling, which is a rope, and something to hold your projectile, like plastic netting. Finally, something to hold it all together, like glue. Get your craft sticks, make some triangles with one craft stick sticking up. Then get your craft sticks and make a base, a base which you will put on with your cardboard like that. Now you'll also probably wanna make some extra supports that go off the bottom there like that. Then get your pencil and cut a piece of straw so that you can see right through it and you can get a shish kebab skewer and you stick it through the straw like that and that's your pivot point, your fulcrum for your lever. What you wanna do is put your weights, I've used some batteries, you can use anything that's heavy, on the short end of the lever. That's important because a lot of weight here translates to a little bit of weight going a lot faster on the other end. So, a lot of weight on the short end, and then on the long end of the pencil where the eraser is, you wanna take a toothpick and stick it into the top of the eraser and then cut it off so it's just like that. That creates a little hook that you put the loop of your string net on so that when it gets flipped around, the loop comes off and then throws your projectile that way. And then of course you need something that you want to fire. I like to use marbles, but gumdrops work pretty well because they're nice and soft. And you put it in and you pull it all the way down, all the way so it's actually resting on 
the cardboard like this, and then you let it go. And it fires. And there you go, a trebuchet. Now, if you want to research how to build one of these yourself, it is called a trebuchet. Ha <laughs> ha, trebuchet. Wait, I can make it come up, but I can't make it go away. I don't know why that works like that. Anyway. Ha. Ah. Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large, and this is a syringe. You might know syringes from when you get a needle at the doctor, but syringes are used all the time in science because they let you measure very precise amounts of fluid. Now, check it out. You push the plunger down, and it comes out the top. Or you could pull the plunger in, and it would suck more fluid in this way. But check this out. I've got a syringe attached to a hose here, and this hose is filled with water. And I wondered, if the hose was really, really long, how hard would it be to push this plunger down? Of course, I don't know where the end of the hose is because it was really long and I had to string it all the way around, so. Ah, ha, 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 here it is. Okay, so let's find out. Push the syringe down and water will come out the other end of the hose. Pretty cool. You see, this is called hydraulics. Hydraulics is a branch of science that deals with fluids, fluids like water but hydraulics are also a mechanism used in a lot of machines. Check this out, this is a syringe with a short hose on it, much shorter this time, and I press down on the plunger of the syringe and water comes out. And I pull in on the syringe and water goes back in. Because the plunger is airtight, it allows me to push or pull the water. But what if I close the system and take another syringe and attach it to the end of the hose like this? Well, then, if I push this plunger in, this syringe fills up with water. And then I pull this plunger out, the syringe empties. So check it out, this plunger raises and lowers based on what I'm doing with this plunger. And you know what that means? We've made a remote control. Huh? Check it out. So, if you take two syringes, and you take a hose, and you attach them to something you want to remote control, voila, you can build something like this. We have made our very own robotic arm that you can power remotely with hydraulics. Pretty cool, right? If you want to build one of these yourself, here are the materials you need. First, you need two supports and the arm. I used pieces of wood, but you can use wooden spoons, rulers, or pencils. You'll need some craft sticks, elastics, and a paper plate. And of course, two syringes and a hose, which you can get in an art supply store or a hardware store. Here's how you build your own hydraulically powered arm. First, make the base by tracing holes for your supports the width of a craft stick apart. Cut out the holes and use a craft stick and elastic to secure the supports underneath the plate and on top. Then add some elastics and a piece of craft stick in the middle so the supports won't scrunch together. Because we are holding this whole thing together with elastics. Then get your syringe in there and keep it propped up with more elastics. Then get your arm and slot it in between the supports. The arm should be horizontal when the syringe is half full. Elastics to attach the arm and the syringe. Then push down on this end of the plunger and, ha ha, you have a remote control robotic arm. You can also max it out even more by adding more degrees of movement. You can make the arm rotate side to side. You can even add a little claw attachment at the end and power it all using syringes. Ha <laughs> ha, science and hydraulics. <laughs> Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large. Whoa, oh, I better spin the other way. Today, we're gonna be taking a closer look at spinning. Well, all things spinning. Spinning, rolling, rotation in all its forms. And uh, uh, when things spin, they're subject to a whole bunch of different forces. And some are strong enough to even counteract gravity. So let's get spinning. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's, let's get spinning. <laughs> We are going to make a gyroscopic whirly gig, and it spins, and I don't, which is a good thing. Watch this. You pull the string, and... Ah, it spins, and it stands on its end. Why does it stand on its end when it spins? Because of angular momentum, which we'll get to later. And here's how you can make one of your own. You will need some craft sticks, string, a small zip tie, a shish kebab skewer, spacers like these wood blocks, and finally some round discs, which you can cut out of plastic or find from parts of broken toys. Now, if you want to research this yourself, look up gyroscopic whirly gig. 
Get two craft sticks and glue them to your wooden blocks just like this, and then do it again. Space them apart and glue them to crosswise craft sticks, and this will be your launcher. You put your hand in the small end, and the larger, the longer end here is where you put your gyroscopic whirly gig. Now let's make that. What you want to do is you want to take a shish kebab skewer or whatever fits the diameter hole of the round things that you're using. I like to use little plastic discs from, uh, these are from remote control mechanisms, but you can use anything you want. I found that this launcher works best with four discs of the same size. Just like that. Space them out evenly, glue them down, and cut the skewer even on both sides. Then add your zip tie, put it right in the middle, tighten it up, and cut off the dangling end. This zip tie just gives you somewhere for the string to hold on when you wind it up. Now for your pull handle. Glue two craft sticks and two wooden blocks, then two more craft sticks on the sides. Then tie a string to the middle, wrap that string around the middle of the whirly gig, and... Ha ha! You have a gyroscopic whirly gig, a pull handle, a rope, and your launcher. Now remember, you put your hand in like this, and you fit your gyroscopic whirly gig in just like that, and you pull towards you. And it spins! Oh, and that's what we're gonna be doing today, Science Maximites. We're gonna max out a spinning rig, something like this. It's gonna spin bigger, faster, more weight. It's gonna be totally maxed out. So come on.